Okay, in this video, I'm going to give you some of the basics on how to organize your gallery and create new canvases. This is a short section of the much longer tutorial that I've created on how to use Procreate and all the different functions. There is a link for that in the description. But if you're just looking to learn how to create new canvases and organize your gallery, then this is the video for you. So to begin with, when you arrive in your gallery, you're going to perhaps want to create a canvas in order to do a painting or drawing on it. Now the Procreate file system is really good. I mean, it actually goes into detail in the, uh, the handbook explaining that this in sort of native file format takes up less space on the iPad. It loads more quickly. It allows for layered files, easy to share, and it goes into the, some of the advantages of it, but it is a really good format actually. It's a very similar kind of format to Procreate. Uh, to um, Photoshop rather, so you can import Photoshop files and it'll work quite well on here. And you can take your files on here and share it with your desktop as a Photoshop file too. So they function in very similar ways. But when you want to come cr to create a canvas, there is a little plus symbol and it gives you some more options here on how to create a new canvas. You'll see that automatically it comes up with some different presets. Now I've created my own preset there as well, but it gives you some basic ones. It will have a square, a 4K resolution, um, an A4, resolution and a four by six or a six by four inch sort of resolution. If you've created a preset and you want to edit it, get rid of it, then you just swipe to the left and you can do things with it. So I'm going to delete that one. I no longer need that preset one. You can also slide it so that you can edit it. You can change the aspects of it, including the dimensions. You can change the name of it, all sorts of things like that. I'm not going to do that just yet, but if you want to create a custom size, so a canvas size of your own, you can choose your own width now either in pixels, as it's set here, or you can change the format to inches, centimeters, millimeters, whichever you want to actually to work in. So you might have a specific project that you are working on and you know you want it to be a photo size or to fit a frame or whatever. And if you know the dimensions in a real world kind of measurements, then you might choose to do it in inches. And then also you can set the DPI in an area like this. So obviously the dots per inch is your DPI and you can change that there. So according to Procreate, the canvas size can be anything between one times one pixel to a massive 16K in, in any direction. And obviously that depends on the iPad model that you're using. But if you're going to create an absolutely enormous canvas, that is going to massively reduce the number of layers that you're able to use. So that really helpful function of being able to use layers is going to be restricted if you go crazy on the resolution on the DPI or the size is in centimeters or pixels. But you can try it yourself. You can create some super panoramic compositions or some really tall ones or squares, whatever it is that suits your particular project. So experiment. Another aspect of this is the color. So you can go with the standard sort of sRGB colors or you have the P3 wide color which creates really sort of vibrant uh, greens, sat very saturated reds, greens and oranges but that only works if you have a device that actually will display that. So if you're, if you're transferring this to a device that doesn't really show this off um, then it's questionable whether you'd even need the, the, uh, the P3 wide color gamut and if you're going to print it off the chances are it won't really demonstrate. Well, it's not going to show that off as well, but whilst you're using on the devices that will actually show that, then that could be something that you really enjoy using. I personally will stick to the standard color, but it's nice that you have that option. So that's how generally you would change the settings. Once you're happy with your choice, you can then click create, and then you can see that I've created a really bizarre looking canvas, but that might happen to be the kind of canvas that suits your project. I'm going to get rid of it though, because it's not going to be of any use to me. Another way of creating a canvas in here is to import, and you can import it from various different locations. It might be on your iCloud drive. Um, you might have a Google drive or a Dropbox, for example. It might be you've got some files located on your iPad. Now, especially the newer um, operating system, the iOS 11 has a file system. So you can actually, if you've got any files on your iPad, and I've not really used that as of such yet, but if you had, you'd be able to then just open those in Procreate. Another thing you can do is import from your photos. So you might have something stored here and then you can just import it straight from there, like so. Now, in terms of the supported file types, you can actually import um, other Procreate files that you may have transferred from other iPads, obviously, um, or you may have stored it on your desktop. You want to transfer the file across. You can open Photoshop files, so PDS files, or sorry, PSD files, TIFF 
format, PNG and JPEG. Now, when it comes to organizing your artwork, you can move your images around. So if you press and hold, it will sort of pop and then you can drag and drop it around. Also, if you swipe on an image, it gives you the option to share, to duplicate or to delete. If you were to share it, you can share it as different file formats. You've obviously got the Procreate, which is the native file within the program or the app. You've got the PSD, which is the Photoshop, PDF, JPEG, PNG and TIFF formats there. If you want to do bulk actions, you can press select at the top and then obviously it gives you the little circle if you've selected it. You can do various things. You can share, you can duplicate, you can delete or you can stack them. Now, if you stack something, so I'll just do that because as you see, it's a duplicate. I would really delete one of them just for the purposes of this. I'm going to stack them by selecting them both and you see here that it's placed one over the top of the other. And I can actually click on here and just put, it's just for demonstration purposes, I've got a duplicate there and there it's retitled it. So another thing you can do with your canvases, even whilst it's in the gallery, is you can rotate it so that when you open it up, now that is the new format of that particular file and it remembers that. Interesting, sometimes I know when I start a piece of work myself, especially when it's slightly more on the abstract side or if it starts as the doodle, you may change your mind about how it's going to be positioned and just a really quick easy way of just controlling that even within the gallery is just to rotate it just like i was showing you how you could rename the stacks or the folders you can do that on individual paintings or pieces of artwork here by clicking on it so you just click on the, the name and retype whatever you want and then you're done so if you have two images that you want to stack together manually instead of using the select button you can just press and hold one move it over the top and it will turn the image underneath it blue, let go, and then you'll notice they've stacked them together. If you want to unstack them, go into the folder, press the image you want to take out of that stack, hold it onto the stack, you'll notice the words turn blue and when you let go, then it's unstacked them. So it separates them back out into individual visible formats again. Once you do have a stack, what you'll find is that the, the front image takes priority. You can't really take a single image and stack it over the top that's not going to work. Or look, you'll try it again. Look, if you try and do that, it turns blue, but it won't stack it. What you can do is place the bigger stack on top, top of an image and then it formats it like that. So in addition to holding it over there till it turns blue, you can pick it up, move it, and then with another finger, click the stack button, and then it gives you the option to place it somewhere else as well. If you decide you're wanting to share various artworks or stacks, and you share it, you've decided to share it as JPEGs, it then will give you the various different options of where you're going to actually share it to. So you can share it to files, you can share it to iTunes, or send it in a message, obviously. Alternatively, it is possible to share to iTunes. Apparently, it's really good for backups um, and good for speedy transfers, things like that, but it's not something that I personally ever do, but it is an option too.